We're on a bit of a quest today uh, to find the cheapest and most expensive brush at Home Depot. There's geese. This one. So we're gonna get two. Two. <laughs> we're gonna get right there. two of these. Basic. Here we go. <laughs> Hold on. Yep. Two of those. Look at the price disparity. Wait, hold on. I get to do this part. <laughs> yep. Yep. There we go. Yep. Please <laughs> remove your card. In order to test the precision, handling, and speed of these brushes, we have devised a series of tests that will hopefully work out and be awesome. So the first thing we're gonna do is do a cut in test on these boxes that are behind me. We're each gonna use the cheap brush and the expensive brush to cut in uh, one of these squares. Uh, so we've gotta go around the perimeter, go around the perimeter of these shapes without uh, hitting the tape. Uh, and then we have to do our best attempt at a smiley face in the middle of the box. And that'll give us a decent uh, feel for how these brushes handle uh, and their precision and things of that nature. Now, after that, we are going to do our dirty, nasty speed test on our six panel doors. We have two test doors that we bought specifically for this purpose. Josh and I are each gonna paint uh, the door with each brush. We're gonna time how long it takes us to do one coat on one side, and then we will get penalized, uh, 15 second penalty for any drips, and then we'll see uh, which is faster and how that looks and all that jazz. So, let's go. Here we go, starting with the cheap on the wall paint. Oh boy. How do you think this is gonna go? Not well. Um, and then I should mention too, the wall paint where you're using is emerald matte from Sherwin-Williams. Here we go, I'm getting serious now. Coming over here. <laughs> so I'm trying, to, I'm trying to match this line. So I'm trying to be like very accurate with it. And it's quite, it's quite difficult. I don't even know where the like edge of the bristle is. It's, so on a feel standpoint, this, this, uh, less expensive brush, it's not making like an angle, so I can't really tell where my, uh, I need it to form into a point. It's, it's not doing that at all. Yeah, you got it, dude. Me so much. Okay, here we go. It's perfect. D uh, shut up. <laughs> I feel like I'm just moving it around. Yeah, our clients would pay you good money for this. <laughs> I'm on the struggle bus yeah, on this. We'll have this plenty of footage super. of you cutting this in. Uh, now we gotta do the box. It's not as bad as doing the inside corners at all. Like obviously it's, this is more manageable. This is kind of supposed to simulate like a, an outlet you're cutting around or something. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going for speed on this one. Oh yeah? Oh golly, Nelson's getting after it. Look at that. So you won't see how precise this is. You'll see no blue on the top. Oh yeah? I see you, a lot. Well, that's just the way the camera's <laughs> picking it up. <laughs> this looks awful. So. I try to do a nice job. Well, you, I'm going for speed on this one. But we're not even tracking the speed. Well, that makes it so I win. <laughs> what are your taste? What are your tasting notes on this uh, brush so far? Well, in general, it is a paintbrush. <laughs> yeah. uh, but to be more specific about the handling of it, I'm trying to cut in this line here, uh -huh. and it's doing a five-dollar job. <laughs> Remember how Michael Jordan made that free throw with his eye shut? Makes it, what, three games now, right? Jordan. So this is happening <laughs> right now. Oh, let me wind right. out of it. Are you, are you actually, are your eyes closed? Oh, 100%. So, 
So what I'm doing is I'm timing it down here. And then it's a, since it's a upward angle here, and then you got to dip it just right. And then you can't lose your spot. And so that's what's nice to go like that. And I'm so good at this, I can spin around and then reconnect it. I'm a little dizzy right now. Very bad limbic system there. And then it's perfect. So Did now you? I don't need to look at it. I know it's so good. You nailed it. Yep. <laughs> Just get in there on that. It's pretty good. All right. Now this is the three inch sashed arrow worthy red frost. I'm more partial to a two and a half inch sashed brush, but this one's not bad. Yeah. I mean, this one, the paint's coming off pretty nicely. It's in a, in a more predictable fashion so I can actually actually have an edge to work with, which is nice, and it's predictable and controllable. It's also distributing the paint in a way that is what I look for in a good cut-in, where it's like evenly distributed. The uh, the other brush was all over the place. It was very gloopy. I think we'll get an Oscar for this. Probably. Do they give Oscars to YouTubers? No. They should. You could probably get one for your OnlyFans, though. I already got a couple. <laughs> Some guy named Oscar. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, it is All good. Right. I like that. There you go. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm trying to do it good. Take it serious. All right, I'll be serious. Freaking screwing around. I'm trying to get data here. You're frogging around. How do you feel about this brush? Much better than the other brush. Yeah. That's for sure. So you can actually cut in a corner here. Mm-hmm. Now. You thought those were the eyes. It's <laughs> <laughs> actually not bad. <laughs> it's so stupid. All right, now it's time for the door speed test. And for this to start, I'm going to go over and hit the timer. As soon as the timer starts, I'm going to pick up the brush and the pail do the coat, and for this first coat, we're gonna do the face of the door and the toe. Um, and then when I'm done, I'm gonna put my pail down, hit the timer again, as soon as I hit the timer again, no more painting. So any drips or anything, I get penalized for. But once you hit the timer to stop it, that's it. So the test results are in, and now it's time to assess these uh, lovely products here. Uh, so starting with Economy Basic, uh, as far as precision goes, this was not a very precise brush. Uh, we had a lot of trouble cutting in inside corners um, and keeping tight lines. I think mainly because it was very difficult to see how the paint was actually coming off and where it was coming off in terms of forming a clean line. Uh, it's also a, a squared off brush. Um, which sometimes that can be a little less conducive to having a straight line. Um, and speed wise, it was not super fast. Uh, we did okay on the door speed, but that's because there was no hardware or anything we had to cut around. Uh, so we could just kind of glop it on there. And as far as handling goes, this brush was, it just wasn't the best handling brush. There's no weight in the handle because this is like plastic that I feel like is hollow. So it's very lightweight. Um, and actually you do want a little bit more weight in your hand. Um, it just ends up being a little uh, like bristle heavy. It kind of is, the, the brush tends to want to go that way. Anyway, it made it a little bit difficult to cut in how we would like to. To me, a lot of what we did was not up to finish quality that we are looking for in the type of work that we do professionally. So uh, that was a, um, a little bit of a bummer, but to be expected from a brush that costs $5. Onward to the Arrowworthy Red Frost, uh, which came in at 16 bucks. This is actually a real paintbrush, so as far as precision goes, we got really tight cuts with this, or as good as can be expected with a three inch brush. It's sashed, it's got a pretty nice shape to the top of the bristles, so it's pretty easy to see where a clean line was being formed as the paint's coming off of the brush. And particularly once the paint well was filled in the brush, 
it held a lot, so it was very easy to continue straight lines and keep cutting and doing things like that. As far as handling goes, if you're not used to a three inch brush, which Josh and I tend to use two and a half, it can feel a bit heavy. That has more to do with the size of the brush, not necessarily the quality of the brush. That's just more of a personal preference, but uh, it handled uh, very nicely. Again, the paint came off the bristles really nicely. Uh, the, way, the way the bristles are flagged, which is kind of how they're cut at the end, it just made the, the flow of the product really nice. That all contributed to speed, uh, which even with a few uh, uh, time penalties on our doors uh, that we did with these, we had a few drips. Josh and I were both a full minute quicker uh, than with this guy. Um, so this brush just is very quick, cuts in as quickly as I would expect it to um, if I was using it in the field. So overall, the Red Frost was a, a very nice brush to work with and very uh, similar to what I'm used to working with every day, just slightly bigger. Now, back to the original question of this video, is it worth it to get a more expensive brush versus a cheap brush? And the answer that Josh and I have is yes, it is definitely worth it to get a good brush. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider checking out our other video where we tested one coat coverage, uh, which is what all these samples are behind me. Until next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Peace. Amazing.